Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so for those that don't know me um, or haven't Zoomed with me in the past, I'm Leanne um, over at Kingdom Bloggers. And so today we're going to talk about basically the foundation behind how to be successful with monetizing your Christian blog. And, you know, I know, you know, there are some people who are like, I don't want to monetize my blog. So if that's the case, you know, obviously I'm not talking to you, but for those who really are trying to be successful with monetizing um, their, their website, their blog, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it takes to make that happen. And so I'm going to kind of go through and clarify and help you really understand what you need to have in place in order to truly be successful. I promise this course is not going to tell you to buy any and all kinds of extra products or software. It's literally just your, your content and the foundation that you are creating for it. You know, when we think of a business structure, you know, someone who's going to, you know, open a store, sell, you know, open a shop, whatever, any kind of business, they have a plan. They don't just say, Hey, I'm going to start selling something today. And then it happened. Right. I mean, maybe some people get lucky. But that's really not how it works. They do their market research um, and they, you know, the first day the store opens, if you didn't market it correctly, you're not going to have any customers, right? So if there's no customers, then obviously nobody's going to buy your stuff. So when it comes to your blog, you kind of have to look at it in that same respect. You have to do some research. You have to put in the kind of the, the blood, sweat and tears, if you will, to lay that foundation and don't just take it with the wing it approach. And un unfortunately, that's how most people go about it. And not just as Christian bloggers, but really in any, any new blogger. Um, and I also want to dispel the myths that you can't monetize a Christian blog, that you just can't make money doing it if you're a Christian blogger, because that's simply not true. So as we go through this, we're going to go through these slides and then we'll pop over back and forth to me actually showing you some stuff. Um, we're going to go through some of my, um, the da my affiliate dashboards, like programs I'm an affiliate for, so you can see, you know, how the sales are happening and all of that. So as we go through this, um, I would ask through the actual lecture that if you have a question posted in the chat, um, I have everyone muted. So um, this is just so I can, you know, get through the actual presentation. And then at the very end, I will open it up to where you can unmute yourself and then like, you know, ask questions as well. But as we go through the different slides, if you have questions about that specifically, please just post it into the chat and I will try to answer it. Um, okay, so the fundamental basis of monetizing, and I really take this to heart as a Christian blogger, um, but this, this message applies regardless of what niche you're in. But you are going to be successful when you make, make the focus of your efforts serving, not selling. If you approach this with the idea of what can I get my readers to buy? Like what can I promote to them so they'll buy it? That's not going to convert well. When you take a step back and really put serving first, just as you know, we're kind of supposed to do as Christians. Um, when your efforts are, are focused on serving, those sales or the sell actually happens naturally, organically, without any real effort, right? And so that is something you have to understand up front. Don't, don't look at this as what can I promote? It should be how can I serve? And when you, when you do that, the rest of it will totally make sense. So, okay, I'm gonna scroll through here. So the, the most basic answer to how do I monetize my blog is simple. It's satisfy the search query. If you've gone through any of my courses or you're in my boot camp or in my membership, this is like something that I say all the time. It's all about satisfying the search query. You know, yes, you can promote things on social media, um, you send it through your email and all that, but those are like, you, it takes a lot of effort and you need to have a lot of people on your social platform. You need to have a lot of people on your email list for that to happen. But to even get the right people on your list, the content that you're creating, not, not, not the affiliate links, but the actual blog posts need to be satisfying a search query. That's the fundamental basis of SEO because Google is a search engine. If you want your content to rank, 
on like page one, which is where it needs to be if you want it to be found. It's about satisfying a search query. It's not about just writing about whatever you feel like writing about today. You have to write about things that people are actually searching for. When you satisfy their search query and you happen to incorporate a recommendation of a product or something, it's more naturally going to result in a sale, right? Because they went looking for it. And when you go looking for something and something's presented to you, you're probably going to buy it. But if you're randomly just there and somebody's like, hey, you wanna buy this? You're like, no, I didn't come here for that. I come here, like if somebody walked up to you on the beach and you're trying to get a suntan and they're like, hey, you wanna buy these purses? Or you're like, I'm here in my bathing suit. I'm not here to buy stuff. I don't even have money on me right now, right? So the location, the point of your content and all of that really, really, really makes sense. And when you're satisfying the search query, it comes back to you're serving your audience's needs because they went to Google to satisfy that need, right? We go to Google's little search box because we're looking for something. We're in need of something. And when you satisfy that need, a sale may happen naturally. Okay. So these are kind of the four elements and we're going to walk through each of these, knowing your target audience, satisfying their search queries, um, uh, optimizing your content for SEO, and then targeting money-making keywords. And we're really going to talk more about that. So let's go here. So knowing your target audience, um, get this to even up. So, you know, <laughs> Whoever said it was easy to just start a blog, I apologize for that. Hold on one second. Anything can happen live, y'all. I have random teenagers spending the night in my house and my dogs didn't realize it. So, okay. Um, anyway, so... Knowing your target audience, even in a business, when someone designs a business like a brick and mortar business, they create that business with a very specific person in mind, right? Uh, is it a woman is your primary target? Like it's a women's wear, is it men's wear, is it shoes? Is it, you know, pet, uh, pet owners? Every business has a target audience. Even churches have a target audience, right? Different churches kind of cater to bringing a certain type of people. Some are more catered to the millennial generation. Some cater more to the older generation. And when I say cater, I mean in how they market their materials. You know, are they more available on social media or only just via print? So marketing is important to bring the right people who are going to respond to the message in the way that it's putting, put, being put mm -hmm. out, right? Mm -hmm. And so your blog, the same thing. You have to have a target audience that you're trying to reach with whatever it is you're writing about. It can't just be, I want to share Jesus with everybody because everybody needs something different in how they receive the message or whatever it is that you're talking about. Even parenting topics. Are you trying to reach moms of newborns or moms of like 16 year olds who randomly bring people home and you don't know about it, right? Like there's, it, it's, it's different in how you would serve them. Um, it's also, Hey, not about like, so I don't say this to be nasty. This is said with love, but it's not about you. Like nobody cares what you did last summer or how you feel about what, you know, whatever, because if they're not going to Google for that search query, it doesn't matter. And so nobody's going to Google to say, what did Leanne do last summer? Right? Like try to put it in perspective. So you can't just write about whatever, um, whatever you're feeling, whatever's, you know, whatever. It needs to be targeted to your audience based on their search queries, right? So long story short, you need to research your audience. You need to know who they are first, and then you need to research their search habits. Like what kinds of things are they searching for and how are they searching for it? Because at the end of the day, that is how you get them to your site in the mode of wanting to purchase something or in the, like their mindset is, is I, I'm searching for this because I want to buy it, right? All right, so now we talked about that, satisfying your search queries, it's not about you. You have to figure out the exact things they're looking for. And I'll give you some basic examples of how to kind of figure that out. Um, but if it's, you know, sometimes we, we know there's things we want to share with people, 
Um, and we know they need it, but if they're not looking for it, they're not going to find it, right? So that, that's kind of the whole concept of satisfying the search query. All right, so content that's optimized for SEO, and this is where, you know, I'm not gonna go too in detail on this because that's like a whole lecture in itself, but just to, you know, you have to optimize your content for SEO. So search engines will rank it on page one, and then people will find it because they went looking for something related to that. So something as simple is, um, you know, how to, how, to, how to do a prayer journal, right? How do you get your post about how to do a prayer journal on pay, page one? There's a lot of variables that go into it, too much for this conversation. But you can't just say, hey, check out this prayer journal. I really like it. It's one I got last week and, you know, cool, right? And I know your content would probably be a little more than that, but I'm saying like, you have to, there's a lot of stuff that goes into making it a good post that will actually get a, like a page one position, right? And there's, there's like 10 spots on page one. So you kind of want to be towards the top of that. But the SEO is what gets the traffic to your site. And the traffic is the most important part of this. Because if you are trying to promote affiliate links, or even if you're trying to sell your own products, if there's no traffic, traffic is like customers coming in the store. So if you open a brick and mortar store and you're there and you're like, okay, we're open now. I'm waiting for people. <laughs> Nobody comes in the store. You're not going to make a sale. So traffic, organic traffic, not any traffic, but organic traffic, that is like having customers come in your store. You get organic traffic by optimizing your content for SEO. Without traffic, there will be no affiliate conversions. And I see this, you know, I have asked in the past for people to drop some links where like they've used an affiliate, like a link in their post. And when I look at it, like I can just see right off the bat why it's not converting. Like th there's no optimization. The content actually was not satisfying a search query in and of itself, but also the product they were trying to promote didn't match what's what somewhat of a search query they did have right so it's important that that search query follows through from the search for the content to the products you're recommending you can't just haphazardly say you know here's a great thing i like you should check it out um okay let me go on to this next one so targeting money making keywords this again goes into satisfying the search query and so Money-making keywords kind of sounds like an ugly phrase, especially in Christian blogging, but a money-making keyword is simply a search query that a person enters with the possible intention to buy something. Money-making keyword, a uh, purple Bible. That's a money-making keyword because if somebody went to Google and typed in best purple Bible or something, best study Bible for young adults, that is a money-making keyword. Why? Because someone's not going to Google in hopes to read that Bible right there from Google, they're probably looking for it because they want to buy one, right? So targeting those types of keywords. Now, that's a product keyword. Another money-making keyword would be how to make a DIY prayer journal, right? Because obviously, they probably don't have all the stuff they need in their house to put it together, right? And so they may need to order some of these things from Amazon. Um, Bible journaling templates, coloring books, all of those are money making keyword. How to, how to do, uh, how to ideas for ways to and tips for, right? Those are all like how to do something like their, their list posts. Hey, so when somebody goes to Google looking for how to do something, you can include recommendations naturally, right? And some of those recommendations may be that they need to buy something. Does that make sense? So it's like, it's, it's, all, it's all tied together. You can't just, you can't approach a blog post in how can I promote this product? Because then it looks like you're trying to promote this product. When you focus on serving, serving their search query, serving the needs that they go to Google for, that is how you're able to lay that foundation for those affiliate conversions to happen. Okay, any questions with this so far? I do apologize. My dog knows there's random teenagers upstairs and she's not happy about it. <laughs> 
Okay. So let's come down here. So again, we're going to go through this uh, presentation and then I'm going to hop over into um, Google and we're going to look at some stuff. So the biggest takeaway is you can't expect affiliate conversions to happen overnight. You may get lucky here and there with a few, but SEO takes a little time, right? SEO could take a few months or longer and longer, really, because you can get some at first and then it will grow. But you can't expect to put a link in a post today and make money off of it tomorrow. When Backtrack a bit to the organic traffic, where I meant like not all traffic is equal. SEO traffic, that's what you want. And or Pinterest. Pinterest is okay, but Pinterest isn't sustainable. So, you know, Pinterest should not be a focal point for your traffic. But the traffic that you get when you do blogger share threads, which I know many of you do in our different blogging groups, yes, that's a great way for us all to connect with each other. But if you are using those groups as a sole source of where your traffic is coming from, like if you stop doing them for a week and your traffic went kaput, then that's not real traffic. That is, um, I do something for you, I visit your site, you visit my site. I am not there to buy something. I'm there to click on your post and look through it because you looked on mine, right? So I very much encourage, and anyone who's been around me in an amount of time knows, I don't, I don't do them myself, but I really encourage everyone to take a step back for them. Like if you publish a new post and you want to share it that day, that's cool. But if you're doing them like every single day or you're sharing the same post every single day, like it's, it's just not real traffic and it gives you false hope because you're seeing numbers that aren't real. Because once you stop playing in those groups, participating, that traffic goes away. Nothing that you're trying to accomplish is going to convert. Subscribers, affiliate conversions, none of that because those people aren't your target audience. You're not writing for them. You're writing for the people who are going to Google to find answers to their search queries, right? So back to this topic, that's why it's not going to happen overnight. So when you focus on the SEO and take the time to really put that SEO foundation on there, you will see, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about on my line here in a minute. Over time, it's going to do a steady, and you may have some little ups and downs here because of traffic um, spikes for whatever reason, but the, the over, the, like the big picture view, it's going to be a very steady uphill. And that's what you want, right? Also, when it comes to monetizing, because we're not just talking about affiliate marketing here, but a lot of people start with affiliate marketing. So that's kind of why I've been kind of peeing on that. But to truly be successful in the long haul with monetization of your blog, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Affiliate marketing is a basket, right? That's one piece of the puzzle. You, you want to look at over time. Don't try to do this all at once, obviously, but diversify. There's so many different ways you can earn income through your blogging platform. Um, you know, creating digital products, prayer journals, um, you know, different types of printables, things like that, Bible studies, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people have an Etsy store on top of these other things creating courses. Um, obviously I have mine that are blogging, but I have some people that I follow who they have courses on how to do Bible journaling. They have courses that are actually, um, led Bible studies, right? With like a Facebook group where they, where they do them there and things like that. If you're creative and crafty VA services, right? If you're really great with Pinterest, if you, maybe you're really good at making printables, like you're just that crafty person that can totally knock out some really awesome printables for whatever, that's a service people pay for. So the long-term goal of, of monetization is not just going to be focused on affiliate marketing. However, with the exception of VA services, all of the rest of these all come back, including affiliate marketing, it all comes back to SEO. Because when the people find your content naturally, they are more in line with, with, with what it is you're offering because they literally went looking for it. So they would be more likely to buy it. And that's why SEO is so important because it, it is literally the, the lifeblood of a successful monetization strategy. Without SEO, you're, you're doing a lot of work, like a lot, a lot, you're constantly promoting. How many of you are like on 
social media every day trying to get traffic to your blog, right? Like you're promoting, 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 and it's like, oh, I was just not getting what I was hoping for. Because social media is short-lived. SEO is long-lived, like forever. Until, I mean, even when they change the algorithms, it doesn't impact it that much. So the biggest thing I want everyone to take away from this, uh, this entire presentation is, if you are trying to monetize your blog and you have not yet like done SEO, like learned SEO, implemented it, then you need to go back to the drawing board and really focus on that part first. Because once you do, I promise you that those other things are going to start happening naturally. And, and they work in tandem with each other. More traffic equals more, more conversions. And, and again, it could be affiliate marketing, it could be selling your own products, whatever it is. But if you create products suddenly and you don't even have an audience, you don't have any traffic, then you're going to be kind of like disappointed and defeated and feel that maybe your stuff isn't good when actually it's really great. You just kind of did it in the wrong order, right? So money should never be the focal point. Serving your audience, knowing your audience, of course, number one, you need to know them first and then serving them. and then. The fruits of that labor are going to happen without you really having to try. Um, yeah, Sandy, a virtual assistant, VA services, that's basically like a virtual secretary. So like, you know, if I needed someone to create some graphics for me, I might pay somebody else to do that for me because I don't have time. But it includes a lot of things, Pinterest management, creating uh, digital products, proofreading content. Um, actually writing content for you. There's a lot of different things, but it's basically like a virtual kind of admin assistant or something. Okay, so that is the end of the actual presentation uh, of the PowerPoint. So now we're gonna hop over here. I'm gonna go into Google Analytics. And Amazon affiliate. I'm going to show you my Amazon um, affiliate dashboard. Now, Amazon is probably the most common one everybody starts with. If you have not applied to Amazon, I would say do not apply to Amazon until you have organic traffic stemming from SEO. If you don't make three sales within the first 180 days, they cut you and you got to start over. And so it doesn't make any sense to sign up until you know you're going to be able to convert. And so it's not like, I'm not going to say there's a certain traffic number to reach. Like if, once you reach a hundred monthly visits or whatever, it's not that, but the content, say you have a certain post that is about a product say the Bibles, the purple Bibles, I don't know. And you're suddenly getting organic traffic. Like that post is on page one and you're getting traffic. Even if it's only like 10 people a month that are searching for it or that's how many visits you get, that is a product post. So that would be a good time to go ahead and apply. Now I will say, don't wait to publish content with products until you've been approved, right? Like because then you, you're still starting fresh. So go ahead and put those product posts in there, whatever they are for you. You know, it might be Bibles if you're a Bible study blog, it might be a certain toy if you're a parenting blogger. Put those posts out there now with just a regular link to the product, right? Because then when you apply, you already have the traffic, right? So then those links should start converting right away because people are looking for that product to buy. They find your post, they click on it, and the sale is made. Um, okay, let me hop in here. So this is what your dashboard looks like in Amazon. Um, and I need to come in here. So let me finish loading this really quick. And this is important that you need to understand the correlation between traffic and sales. Amazon pays out the lowest commission structure of almost every affiliate program out there. To be successful with Amazon, you need traffic, like consistent, growing each month traffic. So I'm going to do a last 30 days view here. So we're just going to do July through 
August. And over here, I'm going to do all traffic source. All right, so can y'all see this? Is it covered up at all? I want to make sure I can still see this chat box. So, so this is from July 1st through August 31st. So it's for a two month period. Um, so during that 60 days, I had 97,000 sessions coming directly from Google, right? Now, I know that may seem like a lot. Most of you are just starting. This blog is only a year and a half old, okay? So this is not a blog that's been around for like 10 years. But it was started based on SEO, and that's why our traffic has grown so quickly. But the point of this is 76% of my monthly traffic comes directly from Google searches. Several of the posts that I have ranking on page one are actually product-minded posts, like the best Bibles for, I don't know, teen girls or blind people or whatever, right? They're targeted for a very specific product-minded search query. Because those were SEO'd for specific products and they're on page one, I'm getting the traffic from people who are literally looking for something to buy. Therefore, the link in those posts is more likely to convert to a sale. And I know that's where my, and, and I, I, this is important because again, I'm a blogging blogger. So obviously I do make money from blogging stuff, my courses. My affiliate income is actually, very little of it has to do with blogging. Because Kingdom Bloggers, that, con that content um, is all faith. My blogging tips, I have like two posts that are blogging tips that rank on page one. I don't get a lot of traffic to my blogging stuff. So the rest of the content on my site is actually Christian-minded content. So I'm going to do a custom date range here. And we're going to go July through August. So I'm right now averaging about 150 to 250 a month payouts from Amazon. It fluctuates. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, it went up pretty high because everyone was searching. It'll probably go back up around November because Black Friday. So it does kind of go up and down during the year, but it's still consistently between 150 and 250. But I can see in here what products are actually converting. And it's all my Bibles. These are all my product posts, right? Now, you know with Amazon, if they click the link and they buy something else, like they don't even have to buy the thing that you're recommending, whatever they check out. So if they click on your Bible that was like $5 or $10 and they don't even buy the Bible, but they spend like $500 on other stuff, you earn the commission on the entire basket, right? So getting those cookies in there, is important but it's also important because you can see i mean there's some other random stuff in here there's my giant super print bible on my post for the one for people that can't see um it's all my these are all my product posts is the point of this right so figuring out what products relate to your particular demographic your target audience and it could be anything i mean you know if you're a parenting blogger like a certain type of toy that is a hot topic. And, you, and these aren't like review posts. These are simply like you giving it as a recommendation for, again, the tips or the how-tos or actually SEOing it for the product itself, right? You can get ratings, uh, reviews and stuff through Amazon, like where customers review it and base your assessment off the reviews. Like if you find one that has like thumbs down and like one star, I would not recommend that. But finding the products that are like the top products through Amazon and other selling platforms that's how you can list these top five, um, I don't know, fire trucks for toddlers or something, right? Like, like the things that moms buy for their kids. If you go to Google doing a search query or you go to Amazon, then so are other people. And so you want to get yours to be the one ranking. The more traffic you have coming organically to these posts, the more these revenues are going to go up, right? And so with Amazon, it does take a lot of traffic to really see any significant, but I do promise you, SEO will help you start that. I have one, um, Barbara, she does Bible journaling. I mean, it, it took her forever to even get like her first payout, but now she's starting to see like, 
every day she's making at least like one Amazon sale, right? And and she got a payout and then she got another payout. Um, I have Aaron who does uh, book reviews and all things bookish for Christian book readers. And her book, her blog is all about books and her commission. She's getting actually getting a payout every month now, right? My payouts, I actually didn't get my first payout from Amazon for almost eight, seven, seven or eight months from when I started the blog. It took that long to get traffic to the right post and get enough traffic because with Amazon, you have to make like $25 before they'll pay you. And so I got a payment and then the next month I didn't get a payment. And then the month after that, I got a payment, but it took about seven months to even reach the minimum threshold for my first payment. And now a year and a half later, well, actually a year from that, because that was last summer, I'm up to between 150 and 250. I would expect next summer to maybe be double that, right? Because my traffic grows every month. Your traffic has a direct correlation to your income earnings. If you don't have traffic, you can't expect to have the income. Um, I'm say that's about where I'm at. Okay. Um, okay, so this is Amazon. Again, I, like I said, if you've already been approved for Amazon and you get kicked out, that's fine. Not, I mean, all is not lost. It is kind of a pain because you have to go back and remove all the links when you get reapproved because when they approve you, like you have to reapply, you will get a brand new tracking ID. So at that point, you have to take a day off and go back through all your old posts and switch out those links for the new ones, right? So just know that. But it's not like all hope is lost if you get kicked out. It's just kind of a pain and um, takes a little time to get it all sorted out. But Amazon is not all there is. There's a lot of bloggers that offer stuff, right? Um, there are other selling platforms such as Share a Sale. Again, it's knowing your target audience and the types of products that they're wanting to buy. Let's see if I can get this to log in. Um, this thing. I have a one post that during, why is this not? Not letting me log in. Oh, there we go. So, And this is, this is a combination of a few blogging products from my courses, um, but it's mostly, sorry y'all, trying to find. I will just go down here. Uh, Crate Joy is a good one. Cratejoy is like a subscription service, but literally they have a subscription for everything. Every day, I mean, these are from the 29th, the 23rd. I mean, they're only like a dollar here, two dollars there, four dollars, but that's consistent. They're all coming from one particular blog post on my site. During, um, I think it was like, well, March, April, the very height of lockdown for everybody. Um, there were, I know I can see my payment city, past revenue, there we go. That one post alone was generating by itself about $300 a month from people buying subscriptions for whatever, right? And so these are just to show you from share a sale, my, I mean, I could show you like my, my tracking sheet that I write it in, but of course I could totally make up those numbers and y'all wouldn't know the difference. So I wanna show you, in these reports, like the actual payments that I receive from these. And again, these are not mostly blogging products. Crate Joy is all not blogging at all. There's a few others in here for different things that are not related to blogging. But you can see, again, it fluctuates um, over time. But every month I do get a payout from this. It all stems from very specific content that was written based on a certain search query for a Monday money minded keyword and because of that it converted to a sale all right are there any questions so far um these were the two main ones i was going to show you i mean i have a, i'm in a lot of different programs so 
What types of product subscriptions are on shares? Yeah. Okay, so Cratejoy is the company, but their affiliate program is hosted through ShareSale. So ShareSale sort of like, you know, some companies have their own HR department and you like get hired at the company, but then other companies use like a, um, a hiring service to hire their employees. ShareSale sort of like a hiring service, but for affiliate programs. So they manage everything. Um, so CrateJoy's program is managed through them. Um, so here uh, is CrateJoy. I mean, pick, pick a hobby. There's a, there's a subscription for it, right? But again, you need to do search, search, uh, re research for keywords to see what types of subscription boxes people are looking for, right? So I, I use keywords everywhere just so I can see search volume, but you could do, um, book subscription boxes right? Book subscription boxes or subscription for kids, for babies, for adults. Like these are all very different search queries and this is just books, right? But, um, and then you can kind of see some others once this loads here. Like the one for kids was a whole different one. I mean, you could do subscription women right and then in that there's like millions more actually a really great place to start is to go to their blog I think it's on here top gift boxes um, if you sign up for their email like every month they send you like a blog post that has like the best of this or that and then you can use that to kind of go do your keyword research to see if any of those actually would make sense for your audience right um, Marta says, regarding Amazon, does it make a difference if the link is text or image? Are people more likely to click on one versus the other? That's a great question. So let me go to Amazon. So there's three ways to insert links with Amazon. I'm just going to pick a product here. So here's the product. It's an application study Bible. So you have a text link, an image link, and an image plus text. The image te or text plus image is the one with the yellow wrapper on it, the, the shop now, Amazon. I would never use that in your post, right? Now, if your post is, if your blog is like a product recommendation site, right, it's a little different. But for a blog, this is like, I, I don't know, there's a psychology behind it, but this makes it look like you're trying to sell something. It's very ad looking, right? And we just naturally don't like that. To where when you link it naturally, like you don't even, okay, two things, right? So there's product posts, ones where it's like the five best study Bibles. So obviously you may put a picture of it there and then a little description. In that description, when you say the, the NIV life application study, but or like right here, they have it, right? So this paragraph here, if you have something like this in your text box next to the image, then you could hyperlink NIV life at, or the life application study Bible and link that to just the text link. When we put, so your, your clickable links in a post, regardless of if it's an affiliate link, it's linking to another blog, it's linking to another post on your site, whatever. You want to make them bold and a different color because we can't help but click on that which looks different, right? It sets it apart from everything else and makes the reader wonder what that is. And so they're more likely to click on it. Realistically, the click is what matters because once they click, the cookie is set. It doesn't matter if they buy it now. With Amazon, it's 24 hours. They come back when they get home from work and they go, then the cookie is still there, right? It's all about the cookie. We always say, give your, give your readers lots of cookies, but don't give them so many that they get diabetes, right? Like don't go click crazy on. Now, if it's a product post, then obviously you'll have one link for each one. I've read content where it says, put the link at the beginning and in the middle and in the end, it's like, that's like overkill, right? Now, if it's a product post, 
like this, right? Like five best study Bibles, one per men, like one for this Bible, one for this Bible, one for this Bible. That's it. You don't have to keep saying buy now. Like they click the cookie. And even if they don't buy this one, but they decide to buy the one, the third one down, it doesn't matter because the cookie's already there, right? So that will convert much better. Now with, again, with a product post, obviously you're going to put a picture of it and you could do the image with the text next to it. I, I don't so much like it when it's on top of that. Now, if you can align it, make it look good, that's great because how it looks really does matter, right? Now, if you're doing, so that's the product post, right? Let's say you're doing a content post. So it's like tips for doing this or that. Um, like, uh, the best, how, how did this, how to study the Bible for beginners? Say that's your post. It's a how to post. And the first, the first step is buy a good Bible. Like if that was the step in your paragraph, you could say, I really like the NIV life application study Bible because blah, blah, blah. There's no need to put a picture of it. It's a simple reference, right? The post is not about this Bible. The, the search query wasn't about this Bible. It was about the how to do it. And now you're offering a, a recommendation for that particular tip. That is where a lot of your, con now, obviously you want to incorporate product posts. They're very direct, the, those types like the Bibles or whatever your thing is, right? Specific products. But the majority of your actual content on your site will be content, like how to and recommendations and this and that and whatever. And so, you don't make it about, about focal point of this product in those posts. It's, it's a simple side mention, right? Oh, by the way, if you need a book, here it is. And then you go back to finishing whatever the search query was, finish explaining how to study the Bible if you're a new person, a new beginner Bible reader, right? The post is about that, not Bibles. And that's where a lot of people make a mistake is, every time they recommend something, they put a picture of it and that just busies it up and it's just, it, it does not convert well. So all of that to say, never, never, ever, ever put these in your, in your post because they, they just don't, they, they're, they're very ugly. They take away from the aesthetics. Your site could be so beautiful, very well laid out and the colors and, you know, and then that it just, it really takes away and people are less likely to click on it. Um, okay. So I had one question that someone sent me. Let me pull it up here. They, when they registered, they posted this question. So let me answer that really quick. Serene says, my question is this. I understand how it works. We send leads to the company, which earns us commission. But this also means the next time the company runs a promotion or sale, they will get to email our leads first which means our leads would now buy directly from the business instead of through our link. Okay, so this all goes back to understanding cookies. So if you, again, they um, click on your link, right? They don't buy it right then and there. Now with the exception of Amazon, because Amazon is only 24 hours, right? I say with the exception. So even though it's only 24 hours, I mean, especially now, pretty much people are shopping daily on Amazon, right? Like some of us do that even before coronavirus because <laughs> we can't put it all in one shopping cart. We just every day come up with stuff. So even though it's a 24 hour, the fact that it is the most um, shopped website, like on the planet adds to our benefit. But with most other affiliate programs that you join, your cookie could be good from anywhere from seven days to 365 days right? And so they could click on this link today, not Amazon. Let's say it was some, let's say it was Crate Joy. So Crate Joy is, um, cookies, cookies, 30 days. So there's this 30 days, right? So maybe they don't buy it today, but then, you know, a week goes by and they're like, you know, I was really liking that thing. I think I'm going to go back and buy it. They don't have to go through your link again. They just have to go directly to it on the same computer or their phone. Your cookie is still there. 
right? So that's where you're not funneling leads to a company. Yes, now this person may go ahead and sign up for that, the email list for Create Joy, right? And then now they're gonna get emails from Create Joy. So even if they click on one of those emails from Create Joy a week from now, your cookie is still assigned through your computer that you first accessed them from. So the cookie, again, like every company has a different cookie. There are some that are like 365 days. Um, so even though you're sending traffic to them, your, your commission, your conversion could still happen. And, and a lot of times it does simply because today they weren't in the, or maybe they just didn't have their wallet with them, right? And so they had to do it when they get home, then the cookie will still be there. Now, obviously there, if they do it on first, first check it on phone and then they go home and log into their computer, the cookie doesn't follow between devices. Um, so that, I mean, sometimes you'll lose it there, but generally they'll, I mean, most people do all their shopping online from their phones anyway now. So, um, Oh gosh, Sandy's leaving for a tornado warning. Okay, be safe, Sandy. Um, okay, so that, so again, Serene, the cookies, you will still continue. And, you know, again, that's one person, one, one visitor that clicked on your link. When the link, when the location of that link, the blog post that you put that link in is properly SEO'd, it's going to just continue getting traffic, 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 and more traffic comes, more people are going to actually buy and so forth. Um, and then again, if they don't buy it today, but they buy it later, your cookie should still be there depending on the length of the cookie for that particular merchant. So, okay. Any questions about this? Um, any other questions about this? I should say. Somebody told me they were going to have like a million questions. And I, uh, who was that that told me that? Let me see. I'm just going to open up Facebook really quick to make sure if anybody couldn't access the call for whatever reason. And EJ was the one that said she had a lot of questions. Londa says I answered hers before, oh, before she even asked. Uh, oh, that was Alonda. Okay, I thought it was EJ. Okay. Um, so again, I mean, you don't need fancy software. You know, I mean, what it comes down to is knowing your target audience, not trying to sell a product. And again, this applies whether it's affiliate marketing or whether it's your own stuff that you create. What matters is how they get to clicking on that link. Blogger share threads, no bueno. Like those just do not convert to anything. Like, I mean, they might convert to friendships and I'm not saying that's bad because that's kind of how all y'all ended up here because some of you found me through when I used to do the blogger share threads, but those are not gonna to convert to subscribers. Those are not gonna to convert to affiliate commissions. Sometimes your own products might sell. Um, but when you really lay that foundation for SEO, then you're gonna start seeing them. Um, I wanna show you, I know I posted it. Oh, here we go. So this is just a snapshot. And y'all, you know, this totally is not to be like, oh, look at me. This is just to show you the slow and steady growth of this over time. So this. Total sessions is like all visits that month. And then Google is the, how much of that traffic came directly from Google. Once it starts, it starts multiplying each month, right? Each month will be higher than the month before. None of this comes from Pinterest. This is directly from Google. Now I'm at about, what, 70, so 53,000 out of 70,000 comes directly from Google. These are some so Cheyenne, she is Rosevine Cottage Girls. Um, some of you may know her. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that. I don't think I can make it bigger. Can I make it bigger? Well, that didn't help. So she started working on SEO last summer and she really got hard on it like earlier, the beginning of this year, she really started hunkering down. And so in January, she was at about 200 monthly sessions from Google. And in August, she closed out with 9,275, right? 
And the flip side of that is her income from Amazon is going up. She has affiliates through other programs because she blogs about, she does home decor, recipes, gardening. She has a lot of, she's like all the homestead queen. Um, her site's really awesome if y'all haven't visited her. Um, so she markets a lot of stuff beyond Amazon and those commissions are starting to grow. Plus she's also started creating her own products, um, selling them on Etsy and some other places and they are actually converting. Um, Erin is the one I mentioned, the bookish blogger. Same thing. Um, these are her, so this is actually like Google. You can see here, 61% uh, of her traffic comes from Google. And again, her site is all about books. So book reviews, types of books, authors in the Christian niche or genre. Um, and because all of these posts are coming to page one, she's just devotionals, because technically those are books, right? Um, she's starting to see her Amazon commissions go up. Um, let me see, who else do we have here? Wendy, One Exceptional Life, some of you may know her. She's been hard at it. And hers is kind of a difficult one just because of the topics um, that she writes about. She sometimes finds it hard to find topics, but her traffic is going up as is her affiliate uh, through Amazon. Um, she's also started selling her own products. Karen is in, actually Karen is, uh, she's a Bible studies type blogger. She went through my boot camp like two two classes ago, I think. Um, and she's outside of the U.S., so her traffic is coming along. Um, and again, for those of this group that were monetizing, they've they've already started reporting that their commissions. Oh, this is Barbara. She's the Bible Bible journaling blogger. Um, She's up to almost a thousand organic monthly searches. And she has a really cool product that is now converting fairly well um, because again, how people are finding it. Um, so again, like your success all stems from SEO because SEO is how you get your customers, your traffic. And without that, you will just be spinning your wheels and still not like seeing anything in your bank account if that's what your goal is. So close this. How do we get off of that? Oh, there we go. All right. So any other, oh, Christina, sorry. Christina's a parenting blog, Christian parenting. She's the same. She's up. Um, so yeah. All right. I know you guys got some questions. Like what is, what is your biggest struggle with monetizing? Is it trying to figure out the products? Is it trying to, how do you find product minded keywords? So Sarah, what is your, like, what's your niche? What's your blog about? Open this Google. Christian mental health and mindfulness. Okay. So this one may be one similar to Wendy's. That'll be a little more difficult to find things, right? So again, Every blog is monetizable, some more than others, and sometimes you really have to get creative. So in Christian mental health, um, mindfulness and so forth, you wanna look at what types of things would they go looking for to buy? You know, I'm thinking along the lines of maybe, since it is Christian mental health, prayer journals, like if you have a faith category, right? then things like a prayer journal, because through, you know, dealing with mental health as from a Christian standpoint, a lot of it's going to be biblically based and prayer has a lot to do with that. So looking up prayer. Um, also there's other bloggers who actually have courses that they've created to help people through, um, mindfulness through, um, I don't want to say mental health because that's kind of a, a, me a medical word to so kind of have to be careful with that. But, um, books, different types of books that you might recommend, the best books, so books, books. So you kind of start with a basic search, right? And then, whenever. So this has some search volume, not a whole lot, but still that's, I mean, as long as it's not zero, Oh, here we go. Well, books about mental health and Jesus, grace for the afflicted. I don't know what that is. 
So you would just kind of start going through here and you'll find mental health devotional. Um, actually, uh, there are some Christian bloggers who create stuff like that, different or maybe that's something you could create and sell again through content keyworded for similar stuff. Um, best Christian books on depression. So these are actually things people look for in your, in your general topic area, obviously with the intention to buy, right? And again, you may have to do a little more research than say somebody who's just doing regular Bible studies, right? Because it's a little more focused. But I assure you there are things out there. It's just the taking the time to sort through all of these results and finding the ones that actually lead to a something that they're wanting to buy. But don't discount the Christian bloggers out there. And here's the thing. A lot of Christian bloggers have created, I said this before, have a lot of great stuff that they have. Courses, devotionals, books, different things. But unfortunately, you're not going to find them when you're doing search queries because most of them started without doing SEO first. So they're doing all the work and promoting their products, maybe via social media and stuff, but it hasn't made it to search results because they didn't implement SEO, right? So if you can reach out and like ask around different groups, somebody knows somebody that has something on this topic. I, I know I've seen it in the different groups I'm in. Um, I'm actually putting together a list or adding to the list, I should say. It's my top affiliate programs for Christian bloggers. And I'm adding a whole section that is all Christian creatives who offer affiliate programs and what it is. And I do know one of them in there has something to do with mental health. Um, so I'll share that link as soon as I finish updating it. Um, how many times is it appropriate to link to the same product in a post? So um, like I said, if it's a, if you're doing a roundup product post, so like the five best study Bibles, one time for each one, like you, you have each Bible listed there, put one link per Bible, that's it. If you're doing a review post, like literally it's a review of a product that you've had, that you've actually used, I would say use it maybe twice, once in the beginning, once at the end. Don't use it any more than that. I mean, that just becomes overkill. Uh, because then it's like, why do you keep linking me over to that product, right? You keep giving them a link to click, they click it, and it doesn't lead to anything new. All it takes is one link to get the cookie. That's it. Um, how long does it take for a website to become authoritative on Google? Google. So this is going to differ for everyone, depending on what you write about, how well you optimize it. Your content, actually, SEO begins before the blog post. So there's some stuff on your back end settings that you need to address to get it indexed, like the actual site for a certain topic. But authority comes from being consistent. The more you write, and this is where, you know, focusing your target audience and the categories that you have, that they're very specific. They don't really overlap it very much and that you're consistent. Like if you're writing about, you know, Jesus on Monday and then on Friday, you're writing about travel in Europe, Jesus, uh, Google's like, I don't even know like what's going on here. So making your site very specific to a particular reason. Now with parenting, obviously there's a little variation there because it still all comes back to parenting, but the authority comes by having more content, getting a few posts ranking, and then you get a few posts more. The first post to rank on page one on a given subject is the hardest one. But once Google does index you, the latter ones will end up ranking a lot quicker. But there's no like set time frame because it happens at a different rate for every single blog. Um, before becoming an affiliate, how much organic traffic should you have? So again, I know y'all are probably getting tired of my subjective answers, but this is not a black and white thing. It's very great. So there's not like a, a number. What I would look at is of the posts that are getting traffic, because you can go through and see which actual blog post is generating that organic traffic, most of it. If that post is one that is actually money-minded, like it's a product post or something that has, you know, you know people coming to that post are most likely looking to buy something. Even if that post is only getting like 50 visits a month, then I would say that would be okay, right? Um, but if overall, like say you don't have any product posts, but you, you're, most of yours are like how-to posts where it's like a mention here and there, then maybe 100. Like the point is that if you have 100 visits this month from organic traffic, you should expect that next month it would be 200 because each month is going to build upon itself. So I don't want to say wait until you reach 500 monthly visits because that's, again, 
if you have a post that's getting all that's all the traffic's coming to one post and that post like has nothing to do with anything people are trying to buy then again that's not going to matter right but the 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 bottom line is that it's consistent and that from one month to the next it starts growing but remember don't wait to apply for affiliate programs before you create content that is money minded Create that content, those, those product posts and how to and all that. Include links to those products, but of course it's not an affiliate link, it's just a regular link. Keep track of those. <laughs> and then when you do get approved for any program, go back and switch them out for affiliate links. Um, but if you're just not getting any traffic at all right now, or it's up and down because of Pinterest, it, it's really not gonna benefit you to go searching for programs to join, right? Focus on the traffic right now and then take a look at it after a couple of months and see if it's from one month to the next actually improving, right? Not, not doing this, but actually a slow and steady upward bound. Um, Marcy says, how many posts a week should a blogger post to rank um, on the first page? Obviously with SEM, please. You know, that's another one. It's not because each, okay. How I said, it's gonna be different for every blogger. There are certain topics that are a little more competitive than other topics, right? So like me, my SEO post will never rank on page one because I'm competing with Yoast and Moz and these high to the sites, right? I know that, I don't care. I, I don't worry about those. In the general Christian stuff, I mean, you could write on one topic and literally it could go to page one in a couple of weeks. And then next week you publish a post and it could take six months for that one to make it. Like it, there's no, no actual formula to say how long it's going to take. What does happen though is being consistent. So as far as how many posts per week, most people just do one a week, but you are consistent with that one a week. If you can, in the beginning, when you're really trying to bump up that SEO juice, like as a new blogger, if you can knock out two posts a week, even better, right? But I think on average, most everyone goes with the one a week, but it's consistent. They, the, the topics all met, make sense to each other. They're not going off in left field here and there and just randomly writing about stuff. They all follow suit for a particular category. And I will say this too. So let's say you have three categories that you write in. Write in one category for a solid month. So four posts in that category. And then in the next month, move to category two in the next month. And that way you're, you're just flooding Google with, hey, this is what I'm about, Google, put me in this folder, and then that kind of can help. Um, but what doesn't help is when you just randomly throw something into the mix that doesn't make any sense to everything else you've been doing. Can doing a, I mean, this, a product giveaway on our blog help with this? What's the best way to go about that? So a product giveaway really works better on social media um there's different ways a lot of times if you get a sponsored opportunity with a company they'll give you a product to give away to your audience to just to promote it um if you're just i mean i, I would really ask why you're giving the product away um a lot of times you'll get a lot of people sign up who just want the free thing and they have no intention of buying anything or whatever but Product giveaways should really not be done via blog content. And here's why. When you publish a blog post, it's not meant for today. Blog posts are meant for no earlier than four to six weeks from today, right? Because it goes into the algorithm, and in four to six weeks, you can hope that people find it from search queries. Yeah, if you share the blog post on social media today, you may get something. But actually putting a product giveaway in a post it just doesn't make sense because by the time it gets picked up in the algorithm, you've probably already like the, the giveaway was already over. Um, but you could totally do that on social media. But again, what's the goal you're trying to attain with giving the product away? You're trying to get them to buy the product. Um, usually if you're giving away something, people aren't wanting to sign up. They're signing up to get it for free. And people sign up for free stuff that they don't even need just because it's free. So the, the conversion to them actually buying something will probably be minimal. Um, Alanda says, this may be a little off topic. I have several posts on page one, but there are for topics I don't really write about anymore. I used to be considered marriage, but I rebranded 
these posts are still on page one. Should I keep them for the sake of traffic and try to monetize and keep them? I mean, if they're there, they're there. Try to optimize them for conversions. If you, if there's a product, um, depending on what the topic is, uh, I know a marriage blogger that has some really cool stuff that she's an affiliate. She has an affiliate program for her stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they're on page one, take advantage of that for sure. Just don't write anything new on marriage, right? Because that's what's going to build your brand, so to speak, over time. Um, but if something's already there, you may as well take advantage of the fact that it isn't a prime spot for an affiliate conversion to happen. Um, yes, Sandy, this, uh, the replay will be available. It takes a bit to process it, so it'll probably be uploaded into our Facebook group um, later this afternoon. Um, Tracy says, when you say switch out the link to Amazon, what type of link would you put in your post? Oh, so if you're not yet an Amazon affiliate, then if you are doing a product post that is the best, let's say the best application study Bible, right? I'm just, why are you not loading? There you go. So if you're not yet an affiliate, right, let's say Amazon, but you still need to get this content in there. And I'm just using this application study Bible because it happened to be right there, right? So you are just going to, okay. So see all this URL up here. Anytime y'all copy URLs that you share from like in Facebook or whatever, when you first, uh, before you paste it, delete everything up to that question mark. The question mark begins the, the location tracking, like it's a tracking cookie for where this link came from. And so you don't really need all that. Um, so you would erase all that and see when you, now it's just gonna go to the product, right? You could also share it here. I mean, you could get a link from that, but really you just need the product. And then this is what you would link to in the blog post. And then when you become an affiliate, then you will have this get link section here and you just go over here, grab this, and then go switch it out wherever in your blog post you have the other link. Um, super easy. Well, super easy unless it, you have like a million posts to go back and do, um, then it may take you a little while. But yeah, you can totally do this. Uh, make sure uh, links to away from your blog, like if it's going to another site, that they open in a new window. Um, but you can totally link to anything on Amazon and then just go back and switch it out. And, and the same, like if you had something that you were promoting from Target or Crate Joy, like get those Crate Joy posts out there, whatever. And then once you become an affiliate, then you just go switch it out for the actual affiliate link. But absolutely do not wait to get approved for an affiliate program to start writing content directed to the products that program sells because that is, you need the traffic for the sale to even happen. So go ahead and get that traffic now, right? Get it, get it, get it. Because then you get approved and put the link in there. It's more likely to convert a lot faster. Um, so let's take a step over to creating your own products just really quick. Um, we're coming up on the hour. That's okay. I like to talk. Um, Amy says, should I go back and fix links? I have some link to Amazon with the full link. Are you asking about the full or the short link? Is that what you're asking, Amy? Um, if so, you know, it doesn't really matter. The thing is, like on, if you share the link on social media, the short link is just better to, to just share than the long link. As long as it's one of them that comes from your little block, it, it really doesn't matter which one it is. Betty says, how well the Amazon links convert? Um, so Betty, we talked about this a little bit ago. Um, Amazon links convert like, like every, I mean, some people may be anti Amazon, but literally everybody on the planet shops at Amazon, right? Like Amazon has a monopoly on stuff. So because of that, even though they pay so little, they convert really well because people shop there. And even if they don't convert on the thing you're recommending, they're probably going to buy something later that day that, that you reminded them when they got into Amazon, like, Oh, I forgot. I need to buy, I don't know, toilet paper, whatever. So with Amazon, you make commission on the entire purchase, not just what you were promoting. But Amazon links only convert if you are bringing 
people to click on them based on the right search queries, right? So I'm not gonna go back over that. Um, if you're just joining us and didn't get that part, just watch the replay of this and we really go into that. Whether it's Amazon or any program, what matters is that the products you're promoting are satisfying a search query, meaning you're not trying to promote a product, you're trying to serve your audience by satisfying their search query. When you do that, your Amazon links will convert. I guarantee you, I promise you, um, I would say I would give you money back on this training, but it was totally free training, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so focus on serving your audience, not on selling products. Um, should I get that convert? Somebody else said something. Links. Somebody else have a question? Oh, I thought somebody else had a question. So let's take a step over to creating your own products. This is a kind of a passion of mine right now because I'm having so much fun with creating stuff. So I've been doing my blogging stuff for a while. And this year I stepped outside of my comfort zone to do more faith related things. But here's the deal. And I said this before, just like everything else we've talked about, your vision needs to start with traffic, right? Search queries, not selling. So once you've gotten a lot of traffic, you start seeing a lot of traffic coming to certain posts, that would be the time to go and look at which posts are getting the most traffic. What are they about? Is there something that you can create related to whatever that search query is, right? That should be your guiding light, if you will, on what types of products you can create. If you have several posts that have to do with prayer of any type, you know, it could be on anything related to prayer, and those are like your top posts, like you're getting consistent traffic to that, maybe it's time for you to create a prayer journal or something. So something simple, it doesn't have to be all crazy elaborate, like simple stuff. Printables are a huge money-making opportunity for Christian bloggers. Um, I had a few weeks ago, I'll share it again. It's a list of like a hundred plus printable ideas for Christian bloggers of all niches, right? They could be your freebies, but they can also be paid products. Um, and I'm almost done with my printables course that'll be open hopefully in the next couple of weeks that shows you kind of how to go through that. But creating stuff, again, diversifying your income streams still has to start with the search query traffic. And so, like I said, the best ways to see what traffic you're already getting, you know, if you are, I don't know, if you're getting content, uh, traffic to something related to a, a, a kid, like being a parent, what, what help, what is the search query? Is there some kind of help you can offer that search query in the way of a product? Um, I did some coloring pages. They're actually, they're on Etsy now. Um, and I have like, free coloring pages resource page on my site that gets a lot of traffic from Pinterest and Google. And I put the link to my Etsy store and those coloring books in there and they've been converting, right? Why? Because people went looking for free ones and then they see my paid ones, which are only like a couple of dollars, but they're really cool, right? Much better than the free ones. So uh, my prayer journal, the same thing that I, I actually just launched that a week ago for my traffic post, which my, that post gets like ridiculous amount of traffic every month. And it's about giving it to God. And that was the basis for me creating the prayer journal. And now it's in the post and it's already converting to sales, right? So if I had created it first, there would have been no traffic there to buy it without me constantly promoting it to everyone. So I do encourage you to, you know, if you are already getting some traffic, Take a look at what you are getting and see any opportunities there to create something. Um, but definitely look at those top traffic posts to see if there's opportunities to monetize in any way, whether it's with affiliate product or your own. Um, and then start focusing your content based on keyword research and, and doing all of that. All right. Um, any other questions? So I am in the process of doing a major update to my SEO course. So I, I have the SEO course and I also have the boot camp. The boot camp won't happen again until January. Um, so there's been a lot of algorithm updates this year with Google. So I'm, I'm working on updating that as well as adding a lot of new lectures to the affiliate marketing course. Um, I'm not telling you that today to get y'all to go buy it today, but I am, once I finish the updates to both of them, 
I will be offering both of them together um, like as a bundle for probably around half price um, as we kind of go into the holiday planning season. Um, so just, again, don't run out and buy, if you were planning to buy it, hold off because you can save money if you buy it later and actually get extra content. Um, and then what else? Gift guides. Oh, that was another one. I'll mention that. So if you guys do gift guides, um, your gift guide content should be a regular part of your blog plan, just like your regular product posts. Like people don't just buy gifts at Christmas. If you wait until November to publish them, nobody's gonna see them because they're not in the algorithm. But your, your gift guides, you can't just say gift guides for moms and then just list a bunch of products, right? They need to be written just like a blog post with, with the SEO and everything else. But don't think in terms of the general, whatever your niche is, so, Gifts for kids who love animals, like to cook, like to draw. Your gift guides need to be very specific search queried, right? Like there's so many. If you just do gifts for kids, well, every blogger and their mother's doing that, right? And, and there's no real SEO value in that because the search volume is so high. So if you create lesser, and I say lesser, but these, these more specific, this is just ones for kids, right? Gifts for moms who, who just gave birth, who need a break, who miscarried, who like to cook, right? Be specific and intentional with your gift guides, but incorporate these into your 12 month plan. Don't just knock all of them out in November, right? If you do like one a month and then have a section for all your gift guides, right? Then later on, right before the holidays, if you have a great email list created, which you should if you're getting organic traffic, then you can like put them all together into an actual PDF with a link to each one of these blog posts and then send that out to your email list, right? So a lot of different ways um, to do that. The, the affiliate marketing course actually goes through this, um, but it's really easy just to figure it out from Googling the, the more specifics of your intended recipient, right? So the recipient here is moms. Um, here's one, gifts for a Bible study group. 40 people a month are looking for that, right? Gifts for teachers, gifts for Bible study leaders, small gifts for Bible study group. I mean, so it's not just like kids and moms, like even within the Christian type stuff, so Bibles and things like that, there's specific types of gift search queries and your job is to what? Satisfy the search query. When you do that, your conversions are going to happen. And that's all I have to say about that today. Any last questions? All right, well, thank you all for joining. I hope this was helpful. I hope it kind of helped y'all make sense a little bit more of this. Again, I know monetizing is something many of you really need to do, like to provide for your families. Um, and you totally can, but you have to do it in the right order for it to work, right? It's not money first, it's serving first. When you serve, your efforts will be fruitful. We all know that. That's like basic like church stuff, right? Like we're all Christians here. We're taught that from an early age. When you serve others first, you will be rewarded. And that same concept applies here. So um, Alana says the boot camp. Yeah, the next, okay. So the next boot camp will actually be in January. Um, just a kind of a heads up for those who were wanting to do it. So it's a couple of months out. So I do a Black Friday sale where you can pre-register like early enrollment. Um, the, the cost of the bootcamp will be going up next year because we've just added so much stuff. So the Black Friday sale will be the bootcamp, but you actually will get access to the SEO course, the monetization course, and the printables course right then and there when you purchase it. And then you'll have a seat reserved when the bootcamp starts up in January. Um, so I'll be releasing more details about that later. But for any of you who are maybe saving um, or, you know, saving for your holiday spending <laughs> and not knowing where to spend it, um, just so you know, you will be able to get all of that for like much less than if you bought it like individually. Um, and it will save you a seat, but you don't have to wait until January. You get access to everything right then and there. So, um, 
All right, well then you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Like I said, I'll try to get this uploaded um, into the Facebook group later. It takes like an hour for it to process. Um, and then of course, if y'all have any other questions, just post them over there in our Facebook group. All right, I will see you all later. Bye-bye. Oh,